Hi everyone, this is Lisa Espinosa, spiritual career coach, author, and host of the podcast Soul Studio for Your Career. I'm so happy to be here with you today to talk about the essential nature of self-care for wellness professionals. And what I mean by wellness professionals is anyone who is dedicated through their career to bring wellness and healing and evolution and all good things to the world, to others. So if it's your first time connecting with me, I'm so honored that you're here. And if you've connected with me before, welcome back. So before anything else, let's go ahead and just take a few breaths and let yourself really arrive and be present to whatever else is going on in your life in this moment. Just giving yourself permission to be in a state of receiving. Know that if your soul led you here, you are here to receive. You are here to receive blessings and wisdom from your own soul. Hey everyone. So as we do that, let's go ahead and do our mudra of presence. So we do this, just bringing our hand down and we say, I am present, I am here. And again, I am present. I am here. And again, I am present. I am here. And let's just take a moment to connect with our root center. So connecting with the base of your spine, connecting with your legs, connecting with your feet connecting with beautiful Mother Earth beneath us. And let's go ahead and anchor these roots going down your legs and out the bottoms of your feet, deep, all the way deep into the heart of the earth. And we ask, we pray, we set this prayer and intention that we're connecting to the higher realms of the earth. We're connecting to the energy of unconditional love, the energy of peace, the energy of deep wisdom. So feel that connection and feel how your intention is so powerful because there's a lot we can connect to when we connect to the earth. But we are saying we're connecting to that higher consciousness of the earth. And as we do this, let's go ahead and connect our roots to each other. Those of you who are here live, and those of you who are watching the replay, we know that energy is not bound by space and time. So as we do this, this in this moment, whenever you are watching this, we are all here. So we connect our roots with each other in a beautiful, empowering way. Again, in this, this higher consciousness way, there's no rescuing, there's no codependency. There is just this empowerment connection that allows everyone who's in this circle to receive more and release more. And bringing all of that energy in up the bottoms of your feet, just let it flow up your legs, up your back, all the way to the crown of your head, feeling so present. So we're almost in the new moon, so that energy of new beginnings, a fresh start. And we bring our hands over to our heart center and just everybody watching, everybody here, just invite your soul to say, beautiful soul, I know you're always with me. And in this moment, I am consciously setting the intention to receive more from you today. So I'm open to receiving more from you today. I am open to receiving more from you today. And as you breathe in and out, just feel your heart expanding to make more space for your beautiful soul. As we welcome all of your divine teachers and guides who love you unconditionally. And we just place a circle of love and grace and miracles and deep service for if you're here, if you're watching this, I know that your one of your prayers, one of your commitments in this lifetime is to help 
the planet to help others to ascend along with you. This isn't a selfish journey we're on. This is all that we do is for the collective. So we bring the palms of our hands and together as we bow to each other in our own beautiful heart and I feel all of your divine teachers bowing to you for your heroic human journey. And we begin with a namaste. Namaste everyone. So today we are talking about radical self-care. That's what we're talking about. And I want to first bring, as I was preparing, was really feeling, right, that heart prayer that you have. I wrote this in my last blog, I think, right? This heart prayer that we have to really be a source of light for the world, right? To be a source of healing for others, to step into leadership, even if maybe that word scares you a bit, or maybe you're very comfortable with it, or maybe you thought you were comfortable with it and your soul just like kind of pushed you to the next level and you're feeling some nervousness, which is all normal. Wherever you are, you have this heart prayer or heart intention to be of service, to be a source of light, to be part of the solution, right? That's why we're here. And when we have that deep commitment, that deep prayer, that deep longing, we have to have an equally strong intention for self-care. It's not negotiable. It's not, oh, that would be nice. That would be cool one day. It isn't, it isn't negotiable. If you are here to lead, your soul really wants you to lead, right? If you are here to be a sanctuary for the world, be a sanctuary for others in a way that has integrity, that has longevity, in a way that creates a legacy of love so that when we leave this world, when we go to either the next lifetime or we go, you know, maybe we decide we're not incarnating again, that we have left a legacy of love behind. That's the type of leadership and service I'm talking about. And please know that this doesn't mean this will look different for everybody. So no, our ego likes to compare and go all sorts of places. We send our ego love, but that's, we're talking about whatever your unique contribution is to the planet, to the world, to your clients, to the, the human or animal or plant beings that you work with, that it is meant to be a quantum type of healing. And because of that, the responsibility that you must commit to of having an ongoing and consistent self-care practice is, like I said before, not negotiable. So when I talk about radical self-care, and that word really you know, came to me as I was preparing for this training I'm leading in November, because I had like self-care or heal the healer, all these like beautiful words, but it was like my soul and the divine as I was praying and as I was meditating, I was like, no, this, this is like, we're talking revolutionary here. We're talking radical. And I was like, radical, what does radical mean? And if you look up the word radical, it really means to the root, to the core. So that's what this is. This isn't about escaping or numbing, which is a very commonly mis uh, confused with self-care. And I've been there. I still do that at times when I'm unconscious about it, where it's you know, we do something, we're super, super stressed. Maybe we, we work, 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 work until ah, we kind of crash. And then we give ourselves permission to whatever it is, get a massage or take some time off or, or whatever, it, or watch a movie or take a longer shower. I mean, who knows, right? Whatever. I've been in all sorts of levels with self-care before. So I say all of this with great compassion and humility because I've been there for sure and still, still land there sometimes. And so when we use self-care as escape, it's kind of like, okay, it was too much. Now I must escape, right? I must escape and do something to, to soothe myself or to numb the resentment perhaps that you're feeling because you haven't had self-care or the, the sadness you're feeling because you're neglecting your needs or whatever. So we do that. But when it's done from that energy of escape, as I've said many, many times before, we come back to our normal life and then that feels like a prison. It feels like we're trapped. So that's not what radical self-care is. Radical self-care is understanding that the source 
of all you need is inside of you. It's not outside. First and foremost. Now, I am not saying don't get a massage or don't go. I know it's harder, at least for me right now with um, a pandemic. But whatever. I'm not saying that there won't be things that your soul brings to your life that are in the physical realm that will provide self-care for you. Of course. But the understanding is that everything you need is inside. The self-care, the nurturing, the guidance on what classes you're supposed to teach, the guidance on how you're supposed to reach more people, the guidance on the unique book you're writing or the unique, unique blog you're writing or the unique way you're going to do Reiki or teach yoga or help your clients or help your family, whatever it is. It is the way that it's going to come from this ascended place is only if you pause and tend to yourself, only if you weave into your days ongoingly this time for this radical self-care. So you're basically letting your soul take care of you. That is a radical act. Why is that a radical act, a revolutionary act? Because most of humanity doesn't do that because we've been programmed to believe either it's selfish or there's not enough time or there's only 24 hours in a day, so how could I squeeze it in? All of that stuff, which on one level is true, but when you step into this deeper level of leadership, your soul can create miracles that your brain can't comprehend. But it first needs to come from that commitment of I am ready to make this commitment to really put my soul connection first above everything else. And if that brings up things for you, that's okay, because it still brings up, you know, triggers for me. Because we have, you know, I'm a mother, and of course there's this kind of biological, my children come first, all of that. And yet even with that, I know that absolutely the best way I can serve them is by prioritizing my time with my soul. Not that, not in a selfish way of like, okay, I don't care about you, I must tend to myself, but that I have this ongoing practice so that when they reach out to me with their needs, I'm sure that I'm not projecting my own trauma and burdens and whatever's onto them, right? So that's what this is. And what you need to understand as a wellness professional, as someone who's here to radiate wellness, one of the first ways you do that is by that, radiating your own wellness. It's by, and I don't mean perfection in the sense that you never have difficult feelings. That's part of self-care is being with our challenging emotions. But the way that you become a lighthouse for the world is really your courage in prioritizing your relationship with your soul and being tended to from within, that courage, every time you do that, every time you resist ignoring your soul, every time you have the courage to set boundaries, every time you have the courage to maybe, you know, take a few hours longer for some time alone or whatever it is for you, that is building this force field of love around you so that people feel safe when they are with you. And not only do they feel safe, they are they wake up. There's some thing about your presence that initiates a remembering in them. So they're with you and suddenly they're kind of like without you saying anything, without you having to like, you know, lecture people, like nobody likes to be lectured, right? But that your presence brings this beautiful resonance that yeah that the best way i can say is yeah that it wakes people up there's an awakening that happens not because you're better than them or we're better than in any way but it's this like recognition right they see you and they recognize even if it's unconsciously wait she's resource from within they might not say those words but there's a recognition which then of course helps them to turn towards themselves and be like, wait, I can do that, right? So, so as a wellness professional, that's the first way we help is our presence. And then of course there's your unique medicine, right? Your unique modality or whatever it is you're doing. 
And if you're watching this, by the way, you are evolving whatever your modality is. It's where I'm, I'm part of this beautiful com part of it. Like I'm participating in this beautiful conference, new, new earth, something. I can't remember what it is, what it's called, but it's free. So if you want to find it online, I am learning so much, but they're using this, this term like new earth leadership, which I loved. I was like, wow, new earth leadership is what is the new earth? And there's been a conversation about the new earth for a long time, but the new earth is the earth we're trying to birth, right? The ascended earth, the earth of unity and wholeness and love and compassion and all of that, which can feel like such an earth that's so far away. It can feel far away when we don't prioritize our soul time because our soul lives in the new earth. That's where our soul is. Our soul is in the quantum field. And when we step into leadership, divine leadership, sacred leadership, we're saying, we're remembering, oh wait, my mission is to bring in that new earth energy to the world. That's why I came here. That, so, so if you're here watching this, this is, and maybe you already know this, or maybe this is like another level of understanding, of remembering, of like, oh, that's right, I'm birthing a new earth. There's no way we can birth a new earth from the old earth reality. We must birth it from within. We must birth it from connecting with our souls, quantum wisdom. And that could only happen with ongoing and consistent self-care, radical self-care. And so today when we do this meditation, well, a couple of things. One, in order to step into this, there's always a release of the fear of stepping into this. So whatever wherever your brain goes, whatever objections, your, your mind, your different parts of you can come up with. And we all have them. So again, this is not said with any judgment or shame. It's just normal. And it's good to talk about this so we can normalize it. So it's not like, oh, what's wrong with me? Why is this so hard? And it's like, oh, of course, I'm in this old earth paradigm. I'm birthing a new earth paradigm. Of course, there's these old patterns and programming in my brain and my cells. And what, so, so it's very important for you to notice what is the story, what stories can your mind say about why you can't have this type of radical self-care? Is it, I don't have enough money? Is it, I don't have enough time? Is it, you know, my kids are too little or my house is too small or I don't have enough childcare or whatever it is. Or I have to, you know, when my business is bigger than I can have this type of radical self-care. Wherever your mind goes, just notice that. So let's take a moment right now. And again, with great, great compassion. I've been mentoring really closely with Kuan Yin this week. She just like really, well, the last few days, she really came to me one night, just kind of like as I was trying to fall asleep, her mantra just like landed in my heart. So I, I mean, I've connected to Kuan Yin for so long, but it was like, oh, okay, she's stepping in further right now. And of course I understood, of course you're coming in further right now as I prepare for this training. So Kuan Yin, you know, she guided me to go back to the Sophia Code in her chapter. I just kind of randomly opened it. And this one page where Kuan Yin shares her message, one, her, the first line is, you know, when you practice holding yourself with great tenderness. And it's like, when I read that, like my heart just like opened. So is that, you know, when you practice holding yourself with great tenderness, eventually your relationship with yourself becomes whole. That was, that's the sentence. Again, this is from the Sophia Code, her from, from Kuan Yin's chapter. Again, when you practice holding yourself with great tenderness. So think of that, first of all, the word practice. It's not something that happens like that and then you're done, it's a practice. And then that holding yourself with great tenderness. So I've been praying that like throughout the day over and over. So right now I'm inviting you to bring that energy of holding yourself with great tenderness. And maybe if that feels very unknown to you, just imagine what it would be like if you already did that. There's a future version of you that already knows 
how to hold yourself with great tenderness no matter what. So see yourself holding yourself right now in this moment with great tenderness. And just open the space to listen to whatever stories come up as, as objections to why you can't have this type of self-care. And again, remember, you're doing this as you hold yourself with great tenderness. And maybe, you know, you bring, I'm wearing my Jesus heart pendant. So I feel it so much. So bringing one hand to your heart as you do this, like, hold yourself with great tenderness. And then ask that question, what, what are the stories? What am I telling myself that is the reason why I can't? have this type of self-care, this ongoing and consistent self-care. So let's just be silent for a few moments and I'll hear what comes. So I know for me, one of the loudest stories is, but I have so much to do. I have a book I'm writing, I have a thing I'm training, you know, this training, there, it's like this part that gets frazzled and and just thinks, I, I have so much to create. I, I can't do this. That's what comes up for me. At other times, it could be other things, it could be finances, there's all sorts of stories. So notice with great tenderness, whatever stories come up for you. And it might even be, I'm hearing some stories of like disloyalty. Maybe there's fear that if you really did this more deeply than you already do, that people in your life, you know, that there would be certain relationships that would kind of fall off or you would outgrow or people would judge you or who knows. But just notice that, right? But you're holding yourself with great tenderness as you just listen to the stories that you tell yourself of why you can't have this type of radical self-care. And again, with beautiful Kuan Yin, with that message of hold yourself with great tenderness as you hear this, because it isn't just you, right? It isn't like our ego likes to make us feel that our problems are really special to us. Like it's, it's nobody else has the problems we have or nobody else has had the challenges we have or nobody else has as much anxiety or whatever it is. Our ego loves to hold those, to make it special, even if it's in a way that brings shame, right? And that, why? Because the ego is afraid of dying, frankly. The ego knows that when we connect with our soul, it loses power. So it's constantly creating these stories and creating the separation. You know, like it, have you ever caught yourself like arguing for your, for your lack, right? We do that, but no, I can't because in this, it's like we're, we're, it's like we're on trial and we're proving why we can't succeed or can't have abundance. It's part of the human condition. But right now, so as you hold yourself with great tenderness, bring forth whatever that was, whatever the one, maybe it's one story that your soul shows you that this is a story that you can allow to get you off the path of investing in radical self-care, of committing to it, of sticking to it. So just notice what is the story? It'll, it'll probably be, it'll be something about lack. Right? I don't have enough time, I don't have enough money, I don't have enough courage, I don't have enough support, I don't have enough space, whatever it is, that's okay. Right? For me, it's kind of like I don't have enough time. That was what came, right? My part that's like, but you have all this stuff to do, you can't do this. So that's so let's hold whatever it is in our hands. And if in this moment, I know sometimes when you go in these inner journeys, we have so much worry of getting it right that we go blank. Right? So just imagine you're placing this like heavy energy on your hands. You might know the story or you might not. It's this heavy energy in your hands. This is the story 
that you've told yourself maybe for maybe for years maybe for lifetimes this is the reason why you can't have this ongoing radical self-care so have it in your hands and let's all of us travel to that golden path together welcome everyone welcome maureen and karen so see yourself on that golden path that represents your highest path this is the new earth path you know how in the beginning whenever at some point today i talked about the new earth right we're birthing a new earth so this golden path exists on the new earth this is the path that brings you the most blessings and brings others the most blessings so see yourself holding this story, whatever the story is, of why you can't have this type of radical self-care. And as you're standing, all of us together on our own golden path, we welcome beautiful Kuan Yin. She is the ascended master of compassion and enlightenment. And if Kuan Yin, if you don't connect with Kuan Yin, you can welcome Mother Mary or any other being that speaks to your heart. Kuan Yin tapped me in the shoulder. No, it was more like send a lightning in my heart a few nights ago. So I'm welcoming Kuan Yin. But of course, whatever divine ascended master shows up here for you. But I see Kuan Yin in front of us. And she's holding her, her vase, her vase of compassion. And her vase of compassion is so amazing because if you look inside, it looks empty. Right? It's like you look inside, you're like, I don't see anything. But it's this overflowing compassion and mercy and love that she brings. It's with, we can't logically understand it. And the way she is able to share that with us is that she first, when she was a human, she practiced through a lot of pain and suffering having this type of compassion for herself and it wasn't easy so she understands how hard this is but she is there with her vase of compassion and as you have this story in your hands just allow Kuan Yin to pour this nectar of compassion over this story just have her pour this compassion over this story maybe it's more than one and as she does that i'm just going to chant her mantra a few times and just let yourself receive there's nothing to figure out it's okay if you have all sorts of feelings or if you're feeling like you're starting to get numb just come back it's okay and just let yourself receive her beautiful compassion as she also sings this mantra over you of om mani padme hum Oh 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 mani padme hum just see that story, that dark, heavy energy starts as it receives this beautiful compassion pouring from Kuan Yin's vase. It starts to fill with light, maybe dissolve. Maybe it, um, what I'm seeing happening is for some of you, it's like really dark and dense as she pours this cool water there's steam right there's steam just like you would do if you put water on charcoal right there's this steam that's rising up and just allow that to happen we welcome archangel michael and just the divine angels to just fan that steam away and as that happens you might have some physical sensations or the rest of the day or tomorrow on the new moon you might some emotions might come up they're just getting released just know that as Kuan Yin helps you in this profound way to release the story of why you are not worthy because that's what it all comes down to that you're not worthy of this radical self-care 
So now beautiful Kuan Yin just sprays this mist of compassion over everyone here. This beautiful mist of compassion. Everything is gentle with Kuan Yin, but do not mistake her gentleness with weakness. She is so powerful. I mean, oh my gosh. So this mist that feels so gentle, know that it carries the power of a tsunami. But she is gentle. She's, she, she brings it in this beautiful package, right, to not scare our parts. So we just we receive that mist, receive that mist, let it go wherever it needs to go. And before we step out of this journey, she's reminding me since it is the new moon tomorrow, just asking this question of what new self-care practice radical self-care practice is your soul guiding you to either begin recommit to or up level so maybe it's something you already do but your soul's gonna be like "Ooh, it needs this refinement or maybe it's something you used to do before and your soul's like it's time to do this again or maybe it's something you've never even done so ask that question as you bring your hands to your heart Beautiful Kuan Yin is singing her beautiful mantra. Ooh, a peacock just showed up. This beautiful peacock radiating her light and love. You know, peacock is such a totem of Kuan Yin. You are like, she's saying, you are like a peacock. You are meant to shine bright, just like the peacock. And now your beautiful soul is in front of you and you're asking that question, beautiful soul, what radical self-care on the new moon tomorrow? Are you guiding me to begin or to recommit to? Or to up level? And just let that pierce you in your heart, this beautiful golden light to see this beautiful golden light filling your heart. Whether you know the details right now or not, that's okay. It doesn't matter. Just receive that. And I just see this beautiful peacock just kind of like waddling to each of you, this peacock, and it's handing you each a peacock feather. So just take this peacock feather from the peacock. And this is a gift for your leadership. It's something about your bold leadership. You don't need to know the details in this moment, but take that peacock in your hand and place that peacock feather and place it in your heart. And with great gratitude, we bring the palms of our hands together. We bow to each other and our own beautiful heart. We receive Kuan Yin as she bows back to you with so much gratitude, your own beautiful soul as well, and this beautiful peacock. And we close this journey with a namaste. Namaste, everyone. So if you have any water nearby, I have this tea in my beautiful Sedona cup. Thank you, Lorenza. <laughs> I will be in Sedona in person. I know it's coming, but for now, this really connects me with that energy. <clears throat> so maybe some nice stretches. I'm feeling like I need to do a back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Drink lots of water today. Kuan Yin brings medicine of water. So, and, and really, one thing I practice with Kuan Yin a lot, you know, pray over your water or say intentions of your, over your water. And it could be specifically about that story you're dissolving, right? It's like, as you, before you drink it, just have, you know, in, infuse it, that it be, that this water becomes medicine that specifically is dissolving that story. And like, as you drink that water, that water is going to go and specifically work on dissolving whatever remains from that. Okay. 
I want to remind you that my Radical Self Care for Wellness Professionals training is on November 15th, a month from today. Today's the last day for the early registration special rate. So I'm so excited about it. It is a, you know, the subtitle is a customized Reiki level one training and, and it really is an up leveling of my previous trainings. In fact, it's so interesting because I'm already planning the level two and it's become so clear to me that the level one, this specific one that I'm teaching is, is foundation for the next one. Because what it's going to be radical self-care and how, what do you do during that time? Not just the self-reiki, which is of course so powerful, but how do you, how do you um, program that self-reiki to be specifically to connect you with your soul and that new earth, that quantum earth energy, that new paradigm energy. So that when you, whether it's two minutes or two hours, you know, that you're entering that, the Kairos time, that quantum time. And I've been talking about this for a while now. And so I feel like it's like, I've been, I've been in that, in that, in that, and like, this is the culmination of that, right? It's like that Reiki attunement, the nine chakras, not just, and, and I don't mean this in a dismissive way because I think it's important to know where the chakras are, what color they are, the organs, all of those things are important. And my trainings always included that, my level one. But now I also realize, wait, we're entering a quantum field. This is a whole other, there's a whole other journey with the chakras because the truth is I want you to get something from this training that you can't just Google or buy a book and get it right? Because you can't, there's a ton of really good information online about chakras. So it's like, what is my contribution to this? And mine, I mean my soul and the divine really that's flowing through this. And how will that help you awaken the divine technology of your body so that you can release the old program, programming the old, all those wounds, right? Those wounds that maybe you feel like, oh my gosh, I've been working on this forever. How do we awaken the technology of the chakras? to help you release those and to help you hold more light. That is what ascension is. Ascension is, and we're all here to ascend while we're in the earth plane, in the earth plane so we can help the planet ascend. Ascension is different than evolving and expansion. That's gonna be another Facebook Live, so I don't wanna go totally into that, but know that expansion, evolution, and ascension are three different things. You can be super evolved and not be ascending ascension is in the heart ascension is we're holding more light that's what this training is about so i re i that's part of my mission right is wellness professionals whether that's your label or not right you're here to bring wellness and like how do we learn and remember to hold more light so we can birth this this new reality that we all need that we all want and long for and that we basically signed up to be part of we signed up to be the boots on the ground, right? As all of this was unfolding, we signed up to be in the front line of like, okay, yes, send me to this earth that has all sorts of pain and all sorts of fear, and I want to anchor in this light in myself first. It's the only way it can happen is first we must anchor it, and then we anchor it into the earth. So anyway, radical self-care for wellness professionals. Here's the flyer. You can see it on my Facebook page, and my website and I'll send another newsletter about it today to, and again today it is I'm looking because I forget because there's so many classes I'm creating today it's $123 after today it'll be 133 and for those of you who are repeat students meaning you've already taken a Reiki training with me before it is $91 all right I'm excited I hope you join let's pull some cards before we end here since it is a full moon no new moon tomorrow. I thought I would pull from the moon deck. Awesome. It is more expensive than other decks, but they also, you know, they, they basically self-published and create, I mean, I just, I love them and I love supporting them. So anyway, let's see. Okay. Like 20 cards wanted to pop up. Let's see. So what is the most important message for all these beautiful people watching this video? Okay, two popped up again. I'm just going to trust that because oh, I love this. 
with a steady mind, I am connected to our collective experience. Look at this image. Oh my gosh, I'm so freaking out. So she's got her third eye. And this is like what rem crown chakra and soul star, which is what we'll be talking about. But this is like, you get to decide which collective experience you wanna connect with. We can connect to the collective experience of pain and anxiety and fear. And that can be really easy to do. The radical thing, which is why self-care is so important, it's connecting to the collective of unconditional love, of compassion, of abundance, not from a selfish place, but because we know we anchor that first and then we bring others to that, right? So let's see what the next one is. <gasps> love this. And we're going to be talking about this in the class. Healthy boundaries keep me centered and balanced. Healthy boundaries keep me centered and balanced. We need so much help with this, right? It's like we're so confused as wellness professionals and, and loving people that we are, right? We, it, we've we been so, I'm just, I know I keep using the word program, but it's a good word to use. It's helpful that we've been so programmed to believe that being loving and being a good person, a good human means you say yes to everybody or we allow whatever energy to just be in us and to let other people, basically other people's needs run our life. And it takes a lot of courage and a lot of commitment to realize that that is old programming and that we can actually be so much more loving when we set these really exquisite, beautiful boundaries and that that creates safety. So I'll just pull a crystal card for everyone and then here it goes, it popped up. Aqua or a healthy communication in relationships, heart to heart discussions and clear assertive communication help you understand, help you understand and be understood. All right, my dears, a lot about speaking. I, I love that image and aqua aura has a lot of water energy as well. Right, everyone, it was so lovely to be here with you today. I'm looking forward to, I think I have another Facebook Live next week, or maybe it's in two weeks. I don't know, you can see my Facebook page and see all the things there, and would love to see you at the Reiki training next month. And also, you're welcome, Jan. Also, what was I gonna say? So, oh, and the virtual career Reiki this month, I'm so excited. That's the last week in October and that's all about connecting with your elder medicine. Because oh, October, the veils are thin. I love October, as you all know. And so this is really connecting with our enlightened ancestry line, right? Connecting with that elder medicine. So love to see you. Bye everyone. Bye Lorenza. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.